Hello and welcome to the Bomb Shelter. I am your host for this episode, Kevin Shum, and with me as every single time so far. <laughs> so far. <laughs> is Jay McDowell. Yay! Yay! Yay for everyone. Yay! So uh, we're doing a little something a little different this time. We're doing a television show, although we've done well, we've well, done a television show before, but this is sort of a well. This is our first episode of our summer reruns. Summer reruns. So we're gonna watch shows that were. You know, popular or at least to us popular yeah. when we were younger. Yeah, mostly back from the seventies. But we we may the shows that we're going to watch at least at the very least started in the seventies. Yeah, but maybe dipped into the eighties yeah. a little bit. Yeah. So the next few months will yeah. be summer reruns. Yep. Yeah. And we're going to start that off with Land of the Lost. No, Ooh. not the not the movie with Will Ferrell. No, no. But the actual the the actual thing that that came from, which was from 74, 75, 76, three seasons. And yeah. let me just real quick right here play a little bit of the song, the intro song. Marshall, Will, and Holly on the routine expedition met the greatest earthquake. Well, that's the probably famous. I think even if someone hadn't seen the show, they may have heard I that think song. Pretty before. much everybody our age at least knows. Yeah, the, you know the, the song. song. Yeah. So, um, you know whether or not anyone needs a refresher on this. The the basic the basic idea is told to you in the song, which is that Marshall, Will, and Holly, um, Marshall, uh, father and his two children, his two kids. Uh, they're on a routine expedition. A little rafting trip. Yeah. And the greatest earthquake ever known. Ever known. Apparently they knew that. Yes, they figured ever. that out. Um, on their trip down the thousand foot waterfall. Yeah, so the, this little wall, there's an earthquake, this wall sort of opens up, and they, you know, go down this waterfall in their raft 1,000 feet 1,000 feet and survive. And yeah, they survived and 1,000 feet is apparently unclimbable. Yeah. Well, maybe it was a really wide waterfall. That could be. And there was nothing on the And there was nothing to grab onto, yeah. yeah. But I just, as a kid, I remember thinking, like, a thousand feet, oh my gosh. Well, and then now it's a thousand feet's kind of like, yeah. well, that's kind of tall, but if you're, like, lost in some weird, weird world, that might not be something. Yeah, and maybe they kind because of, when they show them in the, the introduction, the, the, cre the song, the credits, yeah. they show them all kind of laying in the in the raft they yeah. come to so maybe they floated on down a little ways too yeah, before that's they, true. they hit the ground that's true so but the, the land of the lost is not i think i think as a kid i didn't really get the idea but it's sort of a different world i don't know if it's necessarily just a different time because it's not just well there's dinosaurs yeah but it's not just like oh therefore it's you know this time period on earth because there's some other really weird things that aren't quite worldly yeah well, let's let's touch on that. Yeah. Um, after we talk about the episodes we did see, yeah. because there is some some really interesting stuff. Yeah, there's some really neat stuff. Um, for given the fact there's a kids show and for the time. Yeah. So. So there, there's three seasons. Season one is by far the best, and that doesn't mean it's, it's good. It's not great. It just means it's <laughs> the best of the three. Um, so we picked. I I picked three. I had watched the first season recently, so I picked three episodes that I thought were pretty good. Good representation. And they represented, like, here's the main piece you need to know about the Land of Lost. This one covers that. So. Yeah, because pretty much every episode was them trying to find a way to get home. Yeah. Them trying not to get eaten by a dinosaur. Yeah. And Will and Holly fighting. Yeah. Kind of like Gilligan's Island. Pretty much. Yeah. Except less, you know, getting hit in the head with a... Yeah. More dinosaurs. A, yeah, more dinosaurs, less <laughs> Tina Louise. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay. But so the first episode we watched, obviously, you got to do this, was the first episode of season one. Um, entitled? Entitled. Chaka. Chaka. Or if you're Marshall. Chuka. Chaka. Chaka. Yeah, yeah. There we go. So apparently through the entire season, he couldn't realize how to say Chaka's name. Yeah. Even though the two kids know exactly how to say yeah, it. And Chaka keeps saying it too. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, and and should we should we address the uh, the song says Marshall, Will, and Holly, but their last name is Marshall. Last name, yeah, his name is actually Rick Marshall. Rick Marshall. Because yeah. in another episode later on, he is referred to as Rick Marshall. But maybe Rick, Will, and Holly doesn't sound as good in a song or something. I don't know. Or maybe he's one of those guys who just goes by his last name. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So. Really could be Marshall, Marshall, and Marshall. It, it could be. Yeah. <laughs> Marshall, Marshall, and Marshall. Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> little, we're going to be a little bit off track. This is a weird episode already. Well, well, we're also recording later than usual. Yes. And In the middle of the week. In the middle of the week. And we're trying to get this in under the wire to, yeah. to come in in June. Yeah. <laughs> so. so, yeah. So, episode one, to our shock, well, the first time I watched it again, not as a kid, and to Jay's kind of yeah. shock, it doesn't tell the story. You it's get the story. story. It's not an origin. They yeah. are in the land of the lost, and they've been there for a while because they already have a place to live. They already have some tools. They and made a basket. They made a little basket. They um, know Grumpy. They know Grumpy. They mm -hmm. know names of some animals and some. They they know kind of a little bit of their surroundings. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, apparently they're still trying to find food. Yeah, they didn't have I a grass one, weird. which is where they had that basket. So yeah. they, they live in this, if you haven't seen it, they live in this cave that's not way off the ground, but you can kind of quickly climb up to it. <laughs> but, um, Sorry, technical issues. Yeah, technical difficulties. <laughs> I was just watching my cabinet kind oh, of I didn't shake realize. a little. <laughs> um, so yeah, they, they've been there for a while, but not... A ton of time. I, yeah, I wish they would have started off with just the origin. Like, yeah, they're at home. They just say, hey, let's go on a routine expedition. Well, I guess the store, the, the song kind of gives you enough to go by. Yeah. And I do remember there being one episode where they see themselves yeah. continue in a loop. They're watching themselves. Yeah. And so I can't remember if that one kind of told a little bit more and then tells what happens or not. I, yeah, I don't remember. <clears throat> I know it does show that one part over and over yeah. again. But, but I guess the the theme song kind of gives you enough to go on. But yeah. still, it's kind of one of those things where, yeah, they just, it's like a cold opening. Yeah, it might have almost been more meaningful if you're like, you get to see the family at home with their mom or, or whatever. Yeah. And then... Oh, he's they're... widowed, so it's yeah. just the three of them. Yeah, yeah. So... But yeah, to give us some kind of a basis of who Just they so are. you're like, oh man, I wish they could go home. Because I remember what their home was like. Yeah. And, and you don't know any of that. So, But I guess we were, what, this was 74, so we were like three yeah. and four when this came out. So we it's, probably really didn't care. We didn't care. It I didn't even dinosaurs. realize until I bought it on DVD for like $10 <laughs> the whole season. So, yeah. So the first episode, they basically start out and the title of the episode is Chaka, which they meet probably beside... Marshall, Will, and Holly, the the fourth most popular character yeah. in the show, which is Chaka. And he's listed fourth on IMDb. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. He's a little. Uh, he's um, like a little proto-human. Yeah. Caveman, like, kind of like the uh, caveman in the beginning of two thousand one. Yeah, yeah. It's not not quite human, not quite ape or, yeah. or something like that. But they don't seem to know what to make of him. They're like, yeah. is he a monkey? Oh, he looks like a chimpanzee. Can we, can we keep him? Yeah, can we keep him? Yeah. It's like it doesn't look anything like a chimpanzee. Yeah. No, you can't keep him. Yeah. <laughs> and he, we didn't actually in the, in our episodes we watched this time we didn't get to see but Chaka has two I believe they're his brothers but it's never really clear yeah, they're like family they're family they're tribe yeah. type thing yeah um, but there's only you only ever see three of that race the Pakuni yeah so um, from this show you might be led to believe that they're at least the only ones in this area of the land of the lost because you never you literally never see any more but than they those do three. mention Pakuni City yeah so yeah. apparently. I don't know if it's city, city, but yeah. apparently there's more of them. They just, there was probably just, more of a, we didn't have enough money for more for costumes. For more costumes, yeah. <laughs> or more actors or at the same time. Or yeah. <laughs> hey, that Pakuni looks a lot like uh, Marshall, and yeah. it's not in this. In Why this does scene. that Pakuni have yellow pigtails? Or yeah. Pigtails? <laughs> yeah. So, um, really low budget show. But again, at the time, we're little kids. 
I didn't notice anything wrong with it when I was a kid that I can remember. No, we were very easily entertained. <laughs> it's it's pretty ridiculous nowadays, though. It's really low low level special effects, bad acting, not the greatest story. There's some great ideas, but the stories aren't necessarily yeah, that great. They're they're very basic. And this one, though, yeah, it's about meeting meeting Chaka and meeting the Bakuni and. Yeah. They save him from, he hurts, a, he hurts his leg. Yes, by falling backwards. By falling backwards. He hurts <laughs> his leg and they sort of like rescue him a little bit because of course his people, family, run they away. Just, yeah, left him for dead. They take him back to his cave. They put a, the worst splint ever made <laughs> on his leg. And, and uh, initiate him into the bloods. Yeah, yeah, the bloods. It's a red bandanas. So they kind of uh, become friends. Um well, and he Through takes that. up because he he sees their lighter, their yeah, their magic. I can't remember what the Pakuni word for fire was. Fire was. But, I can't remember. But he he steals it in the middle of the night. But they all fall They all know. Yeah. So they follow him, and then they wind up uh, being basically jumped by the by the other Pakuni. Yeah. And then the dinosaur comes. Grumpy comes. Yeah. And, Grumpy comes, and they all run away. Yeah. And then they're all friends. Yeah. At the end, Chaka leaves some fruit. Some gigantic fruit. Because as you remember at the beginning, they're not really familiar with like what kind of food are we going to eat here. They probably have some camping food left over is my, yeah. my backstory in my mind. Um, but yeah, there's apparently giant fruit and vegetables in yeah. the land of the lost. Yeah. You know, oversized apples and carrots and all Yeah, because it gets, like, again, we're not given any kind of backstory as to what. We're assuming that they went back in time. Yeah. And that they're interacting with dinosaurs and cavemen yeah. and stuff like that. But then... Yeah, then there's a lot of weird stuff, too, that... Yeah, there's some... Well, you don't see it. So we don't see the pylons and stuff in this episode. Not in the first episode. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know if that was always the plan. But there's there's some weird things on in the Land of the Lost. There's these things called pylons, which we'll get to a little bit in a the different next episode. episode. Yeah. Um, and there's some strange creatures called the Slee Stacks, which, mm -hmm. you know, from our history, we, we know about dinosaurs, but we don't know of Slee Stack creatures or anything like that. So yeah. it's sort of fantasy... Yeah, thing. yeah, and they put they're very there. alien looking. So it's like, well, are they yeah. aliens? Are they, you know, what are they? Yeah, kind of like a lizard, maybe slightly lizard looking alien they're very type lizard. Yeah, yeah. Like reptilians. Reptilian, yeah. So, so yeah, the first episode is basically them meeting what becomes the fourth main character of the show, yeah, Chaka. Yeah. Um, that probably and, and the oh, yeah, these episodes are really really quick. short. Yeah, and I think they're twenty obviously. minutes. Well, it used to be, I know, half-hour shows were 22 minutes. Maybe it's 22, and then with the commercials, because you can see when the commercials were supposed yeah, to... Yeah, they fade, yeah. To, yeah, it's supposed to be there, so... But it, it goes really quick, and it's... Yeah. And the, the stories are so basic yeah. that it's really easy to wrap it up in There's Yeah, minutes. there's basically one single problem that they, they try to solve by the end of the episode, and, yeah. and it happens every single time, and yeah. then yeah. everyone's happy at the end. Yep. Yeah. So... So that was the first episode we watched... The next one was episode number six. six, The Stranger. The Stranger. And this is the episode in which I don't believe we saw Slee Stacks in the pilot episode, right? No, we did not. But in this episode, we meet the Slee Stacks, who we, as we mentioned, are sort of a... Oh, a, well, no. Episode two is the Slee Stack God. Oh, yes, I know, but we didn't see it in our first episode. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, this yeah. this is not the introduction of the Slee Stacks, but as far as the episodes we watched, it's the oh, first time yeah, we yeah, saw yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. we saw them. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. It's, yeah. So we not only meet the Slee Stacks in this episode, which as a kid, I you said you didn't really remember being very afraid of them. Well, yeah, which is odd because I was afraid of everything. Yeah, and, me too. <laughs> and... I, I'm sure they creeped me out because yeah. they had the big alien eyes yeah. and they were, the you weird know, claw monstery. Yeah. yeah. So I probably was, but I know a lot of people, when you talk about Land of the Lost, they talk about how creeped out they were by the sleeve stacks. I was definitely afraid. I, I remember being afraid of them. <laughs> and now they're, of course, they're really, really silly. But, I don't know. You know like, like Jay said, me too. I was also afraid of pretty much everything as a kid. Yeah. Yeah. So, so in this one, we meet Enoch. Enoch. And Enoch is sort of, we're led to believe at first that he's maybe the leader of the Slee Stacks because they don't... He kind of commands he them. He kind of commands them. Well, because because the, the the marshals go into this cave. Yeah. And they're being and then they're being chased by three, three Slee Stacks. Yeah. And then 
out walks Enoch, and he kind of waves his hand, and they and they go away. They go away. So yeah, we're kind of led to believe that he's the yeah. high grand poo. Enoch is a little bit shorter than this other sleeve stacks, and his coloring is different. And he wears clothing. Yeah, well, a shirt. A shirt. Yeah, <laughs> Winnie the Pooh type <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah, pretty much. So, um, but yeah, he definitely, he looks like a sleeve stack, but enough different to where you know, like, okay, he's not just a normal sleeve stack. Yeah, you kind of assume that maybe there's different uh, uh, levels, different, yeah, yeah. different not d different breeds, but just that he's like a higher... Higher level, yeah. yeah higher he's level. clearly more, he's speaking a language. The other one's just sort of hiss. And he has individual And fingers. he has three fingers three instead fingers. of two. Or a thumb and a claw. Or yeah, because they, they pretty much just had like their fingers were fused and then had the thumb. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm doing it, so you. But you yeah, can't but you see can't it. see it because audio. This is audio. Um. So yeah, we meet him, and basically he has some sort of contraption which I do not remember, and I don't know that it's that important. Do you remember the name? No. Um. But basically, he explains that his people control the time portals. Yeah. Or the dimensional portals, yeah. because. He says that he traveled from the future to the past, to the past, but that the marshals traveled not only in time, but in space. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And he has a way of getting back to his time because his people, um, they're like time cops. Yeah. And they make sure that the gates are all secure and that they can use them. Yeah. But the, the mar well, will especially yeah is like well can't you get us home and he goes dude i don't know the coordinates yeah and he tells him like three or four times yeah it's really weird how argumentative will is and just in and general stupid. the family and stupid <laughs> it's like this is his stuff his technology he's the only one who knows how to use it and they're acting as if i mean he even says we deserve to get to go home too it's like well yeah you may Not want to go home and it might be nice but i don't know that you actually deserve to yeah you know and and it's it's like I said, it's noteworthy that Enoch tells him, "I I would do it." Yeah, yeah. But I don't know where you're from. Yeah, there's like Jay said, time and space. So there's quite a complicated. Uh, he knows I need to get back to such and such year. Time, yeah. Time wise, with him, he doesn't even know exactly where they're from or where they're from. So there's yeah. it's way more complicated. I mean, it's just you kind of feel for it, even though. Oh, I mean, no one's really the bad guy in this episode. He's not necessarily bad. No, he's not bad. If anything, the Will is sort of the bad guy in this one. He's in this such one. a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, because like, because it, and it's interesting, and we can get into this more. Yeah. But I was noticing when watching, there were some really kind of lofty, yeah, sci-fi ideas. Because one thing that people don't think of, and this is me nerding out i already know what you're gonna say <laughs> he already knows but yeah. one thing people don't think about when you travel through time is you also travel through space yeah so if you were to go back in time you wouldn't just go backward yeah time wise you would also need to know where the planet was because otherwise yeah. you could go back in time if i go back in time 24 hours from now yeah the earth isn't going to be in the exact, exact same place same because it moves a little bit each day yeah and unless your time travel device can also figure that out for you as well like to put me if i'm in this room put me in exactly where this room would be a thousand years ago yeah you know in, unless it could figure that out but yeah, just in general to, but you would need to know the core you would need to know the core and that's what they're touching which i found really interesting nice for, for a show like that yes yeah, for a kid show a kid show, kid show. Yeah. <laughs> it was on only for three seasons and yeah and got progressively worse <laughs> yeah <laughs> with not a good start but yeah. just progressively yeah. worse so yeah that episode is basically a lot of arguing about no we want to go home we deserve to and he and they sort of fight over it um but there's sort of a shocker yes enoch is mistaken well because they they tell him yeah because I can't remember what the crystal the crystals I like, guess powered things the cr the crystals power the device that he needs to travel yeah so they're like well you know these crystals in this cave don't look like they're doing anything and they and I think Will or Holly says well we know where some other ones are well and and Will blew out yeah he blew little, it out the the meta what was it called I don't remember oh we really need to do better uh, yeah. <laughs> no taking it's land of the lost yeah his land of the lost but the little the little contraption he had yeah um, because it kind of feeds off of anger and, yeah. and emotion and there's so much arguing that they kind of blew it out because that's all the marshals do yeah. yeah so they blew it out so yeah then they're talking about the... so yeah they say well there's some 
crystals that are still, I guess, lighting up or active. They're all over the ground there, you know. In this lost city. And, and Enoch immediately says, lost city? Can you, t- you know, can you take me there? And they they make a quick trip there. They Like always, they run into a dinosaur for yeah, a minute. because, you know. You know, because you got to do that. Yeah. But what, here's the, dinosaurs and do, do you want to reveal the revelation or should I, about what Enoch learns? Oh, you go ahead. Well, what Enoch learns is that these slee stacks, because he always thought, I came from the future. The slee stacks were a little more primitive. These are my ancestors. They're, they're his ancestors. We have, his people eventually grew into the intelligent beings that Enoch was like. And they're very Vulcan-like in that they keep control over their anger. Yeah, they don't have a lot of emotion. Yeah. But what he finds out is that, wait a minute, this lost city, this is where I used to live. This is not the past. This is the future. So instead of, uh, instead of, you know, things got better and better and better, what he finds is that things got worse and worse and worse. Um, so that basically his people go downhill, not, you know, they don't raise themselves up. Yeah. So, and, yeah. And so that's kind of a shocker and a bummer for, for Enoch. And just in case it sounds like I'm talking further away, it's because cookies. Cookies and milk. Yay. Should we take a milk and cookie break real quick? Let's take a quick milk and cookie break. Okay. And we will be be right back. Yep. Marshall, Will, and Holly on a routine expedition met the greatest earthquake ever known. That's all I got. We're back from our cookie break. Yay for cookies. Yum. We just had, you can't really, even though it wasn't really time for the break, we'll take our real break in just a couple minutes. But these were fresh cookies. These are fresh cookies. You don't wait for those. I have to say thank you to my beautiful wife, Tammy. Yep. <laughs> for Me the too. cookies. And the milk. So, okay. So, so. Enoch, he, he, what he learned was that he is from the past and that where he is now is, actually, is his future. Yeah, he traveled to the future and these are his descendants. So sort of the lesson that that Enoch learns in this is that he needs to get back to his own time and tell his people not to like give in to anger and all that. So yeah. that, that hopefully he can, I guess, change the future and not yeah. become slee stack type. Well, because there's no indication really of how far in the future this was. Yeah. Because it's, the place is dilapidated enough that it looks ancient already. Yeah, yeah. And he's assuming that he's in the ancient past. Yeah. So that would indicate that the lost city had been there for a long time. Yeah. So we don't really know how it's long hard it takes to his his people to evolve to devolve, devolve into yeah. that sleep to the green sleep stack. So you know, yeah. maybe he goes back and says, "Hey, this is what I found." And since his people know about time travel or dimensional travel, yeah, they'd probably be more receptive and go, "Oh, well, yeah, he went to the future," unless they have a rule about, "Oh, he can't tell us these things." That's true. <laughs> so I mean, that's the gist of. Uh, episode season one well, episode and he six does, and he does though um he kind of because he's telepathic oh yeah he kind of messes with the marshals because uh, will steals his pendant that yeah. he's using for to make the machine the the time door thing work yeah and so he freaked them all out and then they you know have a little uh marshall has a, a little heart to heart talk with them about you know, yeah how we we don't win wars by fighting those we hate, we yeah. uh, by saving those we love, or something something like that. Something like that, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> something last Jedi Jedi ish. Something Rose ish. Yeah, we need to re uh, yeah re- redo that one at some point. <laughs> yeah, we need to edit or not edit, but redo our re- revisit revisit our uh, last Jedi episode I because think we were woefully optimistic. Yeah, about we were it. we were one of those like. I think it was good. It was good, yeah. right, Jay? Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was great. And, and now we don't think again. so. And, yeah. So. Anyway, that's anyway. not about Lion the Lost. So, um, but yeah, but then um, they kind of come to an agreement and realize that, oh, this does belong to Enoch. And, yeah. You know, it's his thing. And so they resign themselves to being stuck. Yeah. While Enoch yeah. goes. And I don't know if we ever see him do. You, we see him again. What, we, yeah, we see, see him, him again, again at some point. So, I mean, that's the, that's episode six. I just wanted us to meet Enoch. We met Chaka. I wanted mm-hmm. you to meet Enoch and the Slee Stacks all yeah. in one episode. And then the third and final episode we watched this time was episode what? seven. No, uh, eight. Disc two, episode eight. Skylons. Skylons. So we have, uh, I don't know if I know the episodes before this one, but they have this 
pyramid-ish looking, small pyramid-ish looking thing on, in the Land of the Lost, little, uh, they call pylons. They call them pylons, and they're basically kind of mysterious. This is the first time, the reason I picked this one is this is the first time they actually interact with one. So they've seen them before. But they haven't really, didn't know what to do with them or what, okay. you know. So, um, basically it looks like a little, was it gold or silver looking? It was kinda? gold. Gold. Yeah. Um, it looked like the Willy Wonka chocolate. Yeah, they Except did, Except huh? it was a big triangle. And how big is it? It's probably... I mean, it's big enough... Well, from the outside, it looks like it's big enough for a couple people to fit in, maybe. Yeah, um, it's kind of like a TARDIS, where it's way bigger inside. Yeah. Um, yeah, when they, when they first look in, they said it looks like it goes on forever. Yeah, and it's probably about nine feet tall yeah. on the outside. But yeah, when they go in, yeah. and there's the control panel. Yeah, so they go in, they, f they fumble their way into it. The door kind of appears. Oh, Will breaks the doorknob. Will breaks the doorknob and it appears. They go inside and it's all dark except for in the middle there's this little flat panel yeah. with little different colored no, crystals. crystals basically. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like what uh, Enoch was using to yeah. control his time door. I think they're all the same crystals because those crystals come up quite a bit in the episode yeah. in the different episodes but they're used in different ways but they're kind of like the power source of the land of the yeah. that you can yeah. use. So um, of course immediately when you find some really weird technology that you know nothing about <laughs> you start the pushing best buttons. thing to do is to start touching stuff <laughs> push buttons yeah so what they find is that when they push the red crystal that lightning flashes and, and it's like whoa whoa but when they press the blue one what happens uh something completely different what was oh, it was uh, oh lightning flashes. yeah lightning flashes now yeah. the yellow ones though Lightning that, flashes. That was well. The green one was totally different because it was lightning flashes. Lightning flashes, and then they do the other one, and there's light. So pretty much, whenever yeah. you touch anything, lightning flashes, and it just makes it worse. It makes <laughs> it worse. So what they find is that outside, it's starting to get not only lightning flashing. They can see it flashing from inside, from the doorway, the light coming in. But there's this like horrible storm. Yeah. So it starts getting that. windy and really stormy, and the the clouds look, you know, weird colors that creepy. Yeah, clouds don't. Clouds nowadays don't don't look like <laughs> back in the seventies. Yeah. So like, um, okay. and of course they realize we probably shouldn't have messed with that stuff. Yeah. In yeah. the meantime, their dad's looking for him in the storm, and and Will and Holly are fighting over who caused the who problem. caused the problem. <laughs> it's pretty much both of them. Yeah. Well, it's more Holly. More Holly. Press more button. She started it. But Holly noticed before because they were um, they were going and picking giant carrots. Yeah. Just go with it, people. Yeah. And trying to catch punk rock chickens. Yeah. And uh, and Holly sees what they later refer to as these skylons. Skylons, which are just little. Um, they're like tiny pylons, except they're full. They're like diamonds. Diamond, diamond yeah. shaped things, just kind of spinning. There's three of them, at least in this one. Well, Holly only counted two, so it's apparently That's as far true. as you can count. There seems this show has a lot of threes. There's Marshall and Holly. There's three Pacuni. There's three th Slee Stacks, which I'm going to tell you about after the break. Maybe they can only afford three actors. Three of to everything. Play the uh, the Skylines. The Skylines, yeah. Spin, <laughs> okay, spin around, spin around. <laughs> but yeah, there are these floating Skylines, and what she realizes is they're well. They finally figure out because they. Um, kind of Chekhov's mirror they established which I don't know if they did beforehand but they established in this one at least that Marshall uses Marshall and well I guess in Holly too they use mirrors and they use kind yeah. of a Morris code um, I believe this is the first one where they use that it's okay just, yeah and then the reason that Will finds out about the pylon doorknob is he flashes his mirror at it and it lights up it lights up and so then they figure out holly notices the the skylines again and they notice that they keep going in colors yeah. and somehow marshall goes what order did you you know what way did you push the yeah buttons? what and colors it, yeah and she can remember which yeah the sequence i can't remember what no ones way. they pushed yeah i can't remember less, yeah. yeah and so they figure out that the skylines are pulsing in reverse or basically telling them hey you guys screwed this up you need to go back and do it back do it backwards to yeah. fix it and of course holly insists upon doing this too because i really made a mess of things like why are you even here yeah it's like if you weren't here we wouldn't have been, we'd be eating carrots right now yeah Giant carrots. And, and punk chicken yeah <laughs> there's chickens in there that are you know they can't just be regular chickens so what should we do with them let's spray paint them spray paint blue and pink blue and pink yeah <laughs> so they're not normal chickens they're nope. they're land of the lost chickens future chickens so 
I mean, that's sort of that episode. And, and the reason I wanted to watch that is just pylons are pretty important. Yeah. Skylons don't come up as much, but the crystals in there and what they can do. Yeah, because the crystals are used in the Stranger episode. Yeah, they also learn there that if you touch different colors together, they cause different yeah. things to happen. It's kind of like in some video games. I remember there's, yeah. you know, you you get certain things and mix them together and they would, you know, some would give you a force field, some would give yeah. you more power, you know, depending on the ones, the ones I can remember off the top of my head are force field, which they used in The Stranger. Mm -hmm. They also have a light flash that will scare away um, slay stacks. Okay. And I think there's a certain ones where if you, you obviously don't want to hold them in your hands, but if you touch a certain colors together, they explode like a little small bomb. Oh, okay. So, kind of neat. I mean, another really neat thing when I was a kid, I was like, man, I'd love to have little crystals like that <laughs> that I could do different things. You're out getting marbles and trying to tap. Yeah. yeah. And I even working. remember thinking like, oh, I wonder what, th you know, maybe they show you like blue and green do this, red and yellow do this. And I remember thinking like, I wonder what red and green Making do. your own combinations. Yeah, like, I bet that would do this. It's like, eh, okay. I put more thought into it than the writers did. We didn't know? have phones and stuff when we were yeah. children, so. We just had our imagination. Yeah. So... Would this be a good spot to take our actual non-cookie break? Yeah, but okay. there are two cookies left, so we might still... We might do cookies cookie. and a break, yeah. So, but, yeah, this will be our little Land of the Lost break, and we will be right, right back. back. Met the greatest we've ever known High on the rapids It struck the tiny rock ah! That's good. And plunge them down. Hmm. I'm so tired. A thousand feet below. Man, I'm feeling weak. The land. land of the and we are back. Back, 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 back. <laughs> Um, so let's talk a little more general about just the show and some of the details, actors and yeah, song, yeah. And stuff like that. Yeah, um, the, the actors first off. Um, yeah. We have the three main uh, people. We have Will, Holly, and Park Ranger Marshall. Park Ranger Rick Marshall. Rick Marshall. And uh, <laughs> Will Marshall was portrayed in the credits by Wesley. Wesley. <laughs> and I read some trivia a while back about how he wanted to do the single name actor, performer, like Cher or Prince yeah. type thing. Uh, although not Prince, Prince necessarily, not Prince. but yeah. But yeah, like just sort of the, I'm so famous that if you just say Michael, you know I mean Michael Jackson. You yeah. just say Wesley, obviously you mean me. Yeah, such a nice, boring name. But no, it didn't no work. Offense, people like Wesley. Yeah, yeah. But it didn't work. Well, and two, we were in the, the at that time. It was the era of uh, uh, David Cassidy. Yeah, and, yeah. And he wanted know, to be one of those type. Yeah, guys. kind of the teen heartthrob. Yeah, he's a thing. he's a good looking guy. He I could imagine if things had gone the right way for him, he could have been more famous. You yeah, know? yeah. And he went on. He did some kind of you know TV shows and stuff yeah. like that. Kind of a lot of the shows that everybody did in the yeah. in the seventies. Yeah. So. so that's Will Marshall. He's the I don't know exactly how old he's supposed to be. Late teens, maybe? He looks like he's probably supposed to be 17, 18. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he still acts like a child. Yeah. <laughs> but I think he was probably supposed to be like 16, 17. Yeah. So then we got Holly. She's the the daughter. She is... What's her age, would you guess? I'm really bad she, at ages. Maybe 12? Yeah, she looked to be about 11 or 12. Yeah, right around there. She is really annoying. Very um, annoying. And huge buck teeth. Giant buck teeth. Um, Which stayed amazingly white in the land of the law. Yeah, somehow they brush their teeth with <laughs> dirt and sticks. sticks or something. But yeah, she's... Uh, Played by an actress named Kathy, Kathy Coleman. Coleman. And <clears throat> in IMDb, it looked like she kind of did too much afterward. And then there's something that she's in that's in production. Yeah, like, yeah. So I guess maybe somebody... Hunted her down and was like, hey, like hey, we got to put you in yeah. this. Yeah. Loved you, Land of Lost. We're making this movie about 70s TV shows. Yeah. And, or I don't know what it's about, yeah. but that's the only thing I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. And we got uh, Park Ranger Rick Marshall. Rick Marshall. He was played by Spencer M Milligan. Spencer Milligan. But he was only in the first season. Yeah. Uh, the other two, of course, were in all three. First and second season. He's gone in the third first season. First and second? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was just the first season. After which he was replaced by 
their uncle. Their uncle, because coincidentally, remember. yeah, he managed to fall into the same yeah time por time space portal and wind up there when coincidentally yeah the, the dad same. left <laughs> yeah. So and we keep joking about how the kids are so annoying that that you know Rick Marshall probably like oops I accidentally found my way back and yeah. like, couldn't take you with me oops yeah there was some episode lost episode where he's like hey I found a portal back and he goes through and he's like yay and he goes. I should go get the kids. They're like, nah, never mind. Mm, maybe close not. portal. Yeah, close yeah. portal, and they just tells everybody they drown. Yeah, yeah, it was a horrible thing. Spencer Milligan had been in quite a bit, yeah. but kind of spread. Like he was in one thing in the sixties, in like sixty three or sixty four, and then and ten then, years later, he's in something else. Yeah, and then he's in quite a bit. All the same thing, you know, Quincy. Up until about eighty seven. Yeah, yeah, Quincy and some just all the typical seventies. Yeah, things you'd see him on. I think. I don't know if he was on ships. I know um, Will Marshall had said he was on yeah, ships. Yeah, he was on episode. ships. But yeah, they just, they weren't, they didn't go on to huge things after. For all of them, this is their most well-known role. Yeah. Like this is, on the internet movie database, when you look them up, the first thing they're well-known for is Lionel Lost. Lionel Lost, yeah. And then, which brings us to Chaka. Yeah. Played by Philip Paley. Yeah. Um, and he was literally in, I think, this and two other things, right? Um, I think he had a few more credits oh that's name. right he had something more recent that's uh right. beach balls in 1988 was his last one yeah he was also on airwolf yeah airwolf. One episode. well he was only in like four things it shows yeah so uh which i guess we could have looked at the other people too but hey yeah. nah um but yeah he was uh he didn't have a whole big long yeah career none of these are i mean none of these people are retired at, from the millions they've made from acting <laughs> yeah. so they, they probably do a lot of the con yeah, circuits they, and stuff. I'm but, sure they do. But, yeah. But it's, it's a fun show. I mean, in my opinion, Chaka... Um, steals the show. He steals the show. I think I mean, he's probably the youngest of the main... He's got to be the youngest actor of the main four people. Yeah. I think yeah. he does the best job. Well, and I think everybody knows the Marshalls, at least. Yeah. They can remember there being the dad and the two kids yeah but everybody remembers Chaka. Chaka. he's he's the one thing that you know he's the one thing you remember from the show yeah he has none of the episodes we got into show them a lot but he has just like with everything there's three there's three marshals there's three slee stacks that you see all the time yeah. plus green slee stacks plus enoch that you meet in mm -hmm. a few episodes and then there's three main dinosaurs and there are three uh pakuni which yeah. Chaka is a Pakuni. Then Chaka's the smallest, you assume the youngest. And then yeah. he's got two older, and I never have figured out if they are parents, yeah, didn't, brothers, didn't brother and sister. Just tribe mates, basically. I, I happen to remember their names are Pa and... No. No, no. Ta and Sa. Which I think is just T-A and S-A or something <laughs> like that. Anyway. That's as much as I want to remember out of my memory. Yeah. yeah my my memory doesn't need space for that sort of thing. commit that kind of stuff to your memory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, it's it's odd they have a lot of threes in this episode, and we've sort of joked a little bit based on fact that maybe it was just a budgeting thing. Like, you can't have 10,000 Pakuni running around because yeah. you'd have to have 10,000 actors and, and 10,000 costumes. Well, usually in, in movies like, uh, like in Star Wars, for instance, the stormtroopers that would have screen time, have face time, yeah. they have very detailed uniforms and masks. Uh. And those are called hero masks. Okay. And then you've got the ones in the background that are, you don't really yeah. get up close on. And so they may be just a lot more plain. They may, you know, they'll have the dark lenses yeah. and stuff like they that. They just didn't need the detail. Yeah, they don't need the detail. And it's, it's that way with a lot of, uh, uh, with a lot of movies where there's like a lot of monsters and stuff. Yeah. You have your hero masks and then you just have kind of the others yeah. that are just, that makes sense. just makeup and stuff like that. Yeah. And so I think, well, we know that due to budget constraints, they only made the three green slee stacks. Yeah. Yeah, They now the slee stacks are... I didn't realize this as a kid. Somehow I didn't realize this, even though they terrified me. But if you watch it today, you realize, like, the slee stacks, all three of them, they, they only They're made three huge. costumes. They're gigantic people in those costumes. And one of them happens to be... I don't know if the other two are famous, but one of them is a famous... Well, previously famous basketball player named Bill Lambeer. Yeah. And was he on the Celtics? I don't remember I, anymore. I used to probably sure. know. <laughs> Let's just say he was on the Celtics or the Pistons, and I'm probably almost yeah. for sure wrong. But I'll yeah. just say that. And if I I'm think, right, then I look really smart. I think he ran for 
like political. I office think he did too. You're right. Back in the late nineties, I think. Yeah. So these are not just tall actors, but these are like unusually tall human beings. You yeah, know, like kind of, kind of seven like a, foot range, probably. Kind of like when they had um, Andre the Giant for Bigfoot. Yeah. You know, they would get athletes who were really un, un, big or yeah. you know unusually tall, big. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So they're pretty. I mean, they don't. Well, they do scare me still. I'll just admit right now. But it is scary how big they are. And somehow I didn't realize that. I think it's because the way they move, they kind of lean over a little bit. So they don't look as big until you start thinking about like, wow, he's way bigger than him. Yeah. Then they made that hissy sound all the yeah, time too, yeah. which was kind of, yeah. was a little un, 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 yeah. off-putting. Although when you call it the hissy sound, it doesn't sound as scary. Yeah, it does. kind of sounds like they're just throwing temper tantrums. Yeah. The hissing sound. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, there's there's seems to be three of everything. Um, anyway, so I assume probably just like the slate stacks, it was budget constraints. Yeah, because I can't imagine the show had a huge budget. Oh no, not at all. I mean, Sid and Marty Croft cranked out a bunch of stuff. Yeah, and they the were 70s. all sort of they similar. They were all very low budget. Yeah, 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 and especially the Croft superstars ones. Yeah, I mean, because they did, you know. Uh, didn't they do H and R, H R Puff and stuff? So, and stuff? Yeah. That had a little bit more because it was a feature. Yeah, yeah. but I used to watch the, that too. Yeah, yeah, I remember that would always come on. But we we had this and we had uh, the Bugaloos and Doctor Shrinker, and they were all very low budget. Yeah, a lot of blue screen. Yeah, I mean a lot of a lot of the land of the lost. It looks like they're running around in in you know natural history museum yeah. displays and stuff. Yeah, and so I can imagine it was like okay. We've only got enough money to make three of these costumes. Yeah. And we really, since it's so tight, yeah. we don't need a tribe of yeah. money. So, yeah, they're, if they're running from the slee stacks, you'll see, okay, there's two of them right here. Run! They run around the corner, there's three, and, and you know that that's the two you just saw plus the other one. Yeah, and that they're just running around behind the stage. Yeah. And, and that is around. something I noticed also, like a lot of low-budget movies as well, is... They're running through this vast cavern, and what you realize is that they're they ran left. Then they turn the camera, and then around. they turn the camera to the other side, and they run the other direction. And yeah. It looks like it looks enough different. Well, like, they must be in the next tunnel. Star over. crash, yeah, like Star <laughs> Crash. Great example of that. So yeah, it's it's low budget, but like Jay said, there's some pretty neat ideas that are especially neat considering this clearly is for kids. This show, it's yeah, not, there's a lot of high ideas. Yeah, and it, it gets. I mean. Well, we're just talking right now, but if you want to borrow it and watch more, you can. But there's some really weird stuff. I mean, it gets almost every episode. There's a few silly episodes, yeah. but almost every episode or every other episode has some weird kind like, of wow, that's kind of all that. Yeah, yeah. Because like in the Stranger, when when Enoch is describing, you know, the time travel and the coordinates, it's like it's a little complicated I, for a kid. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't think of it. Not, I mean. You look at most movies that involve time travel, they don't consider yeah. space. Yeah. They only consider time. And then, you know, you had the the different crystals doing different things yeah. and the combinations. Yeah. And, you know, oh, I thought I went back to the past. No, I'm in the future. Yeah. And Thing, yeah, just things that is a kid's show didn't need to go that far. They could have kept it a little more simple. Yeah. Because kids don't really care. Yeah, it could have been just, ah, Green Monsters. Uh, yeah. Maybe s someone had their shot and then I'm like, and they were like, you know what? I have this great idea about this. I don't care if there's only five-year-olds watching this show. Yeah. I'm going to talk about it It was it like anyway. somebody was reading a lot of the... the yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe not paranormal stuff, but probably a lot of the UFO stuff because the, the sleeve stacks definitely look like reptilians. Oh, and, yeah. And stuff and yeah, yeah. I, mean, I always assumed they were meant to be kind of descendants of the dinosaurs, or yeah. or an offshoot, yeah, kind of thing. But apparently, they weren't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah, it's a really interesting show. Yeah. It's not good. No, by not by. But it's it's worth if you haven't seen it since you were a kid. It might be worth watching again just to like get another take the on first it. Season. Yeah, <laughs> just the first season. Um, or if you've never seen it, maybe you've seen the movie, which is totally different. Watch the episode just to have a fun, you know, a laugh. Yeah. You know, it's, it's goofy and it's, it's worth watch an episode or two. It's worth that. If you hate it, then, oh, well. But, One thing we didn't talk about or touch on was the dinosaurs themselves. Oh yeah. They were a combination of stop motion and yeah. puppets. And puppets. Yep. Yeah. And not really good stop motion. Yeah. And not really good puppets. None of which, again, I realized as a kid how horrible it was. I think I was just like a lot of things as a kid. You're just so happy to have something that you like. Yeah. And that had on the screen. 
yeah. that it's like whether I knew they looked dumb or not as a kid, it's like, yeah. I don't care, it's a dinosaur. Thank you yeah. for being on TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. yeah. So, yeah, but there was there was a lot of good, you know, like I said, we were we were easily entertained back then. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I, I, I sort of have always already mentioned some of my personal memories of that, just how I wished, you know, I wished those crystals i wish those were real and i and mm-hmm. i wondered like well what if i combine this one and that one what would happen you know yeah. like, i kind of i don't know that i ever played land of the lost with my friends maybe i did i, I don't know but it it was pretty it's a good memory from my childhood and yeah i remember that i remember the dinosaurs i remember the sleigh stacks being scary i remember as a kid thinking oh you know he's so scary because he's like the sleeve stacks but intelligent too yeah and then realizing like no he's he's kind of a good guy so i don't need to be worried about yeah him. which was kind of when you're a little kid it's kind of hard to wrap your head around yeah a scary monster that's they can good. speak and he's not mean and yeah that hurt wants anyone. to help you yeah. yeah so i remember that as a kid it's just you know and it's funny i don't i i know i watched the show religiously yeah and i remember bits and pieces of it but i do not have a yeah a full encyclopedic memory oh, yeah. of of this show and i'll remember stuff now because i've watched the entire first and second season i think about a month and a half ago or so yeah so i mean but as i watched it i would i wouldn't necessarily remember the entire episode but i'd see something like oh i remember watching that i remember when that happened yeah see i can't remember any little bits and pieces episodes, yeah except for the and this is over the this is rare because usually your memory is way better on shows than mine yeah. is. but for some reason in this case it just Maybe it just the sleeve stack scared me enough yeah. that I didn't want to remember it. I do have I do have one memory um, where, well, not when I was a little tiny kid, but around the time I would have been watching this, um, and where my mom still lives. Um, well, now they're building houses, but kind of down the street from my mom's house was undeveloped land. It mm-hmm. is developed now, but I remember going down there as a kid. So I guess I did play the land of lost because yeah. I remember. Me and my friend used to call it the Land of the Lost. And that memory just came to me just right now. Oh, there you go. And that's obviously where I got the name The Land of the Lost was from the show. So I don't know that we necessarily played it, but it was part of my world that I would have called a whole place that we went. Yeah. I would have named it after the show. So I must have really liked the show. Some kind of impact on you. Yeah, it has some sort of impact. Yeah, that's weird. I just now remember that. Well, Uh, there you go. Yeah. So there you have it. Land of the Lost. Land of the Lost. We usually do good, bad, and the ugly. Um... (laughs) There's, this is a mishmash of all three. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, you could say it's ugly, and for to some people, if you've never seen it before and you're younger than us, you might watch it and think this is the worst, dumbest thing I've ever seen in my yeah. life. But if you watched it when you're five, you may have some. There might be some good to it. Yeah, yeah. it's not aesthetically pleasing. No, no. It's it's really, you know, cheaply done and stuff. But like I said, that you know, it had some pretty lofty yeah ideas of things that went over our heads oh i never even thought or cared about it yeah yeah yeah. i mean i i spend probably an inordinate amount of time thinking just thinking about time travel and stuff like that now but you know back then i yeah didn't think i was just looking at the monsters and the dinosaurs yeah that was good enough for me yeah but yeah it's it was good and ugly seasons two and three yeah, season two and three. I, I did not buy season three because I'm a purist. Nope. I mean, because it sucks so much that even, like, it's like $8 for the whole season. Like, nope, season two wasn't even worth $9. So I know. Not... I think your exact words were, they couldn't even give it to me. Yeah, Something yeah. to that effect. I don't have enough time in my life to watch season three. <laughs> Mostly because I'm a Spencer Milligan fan, and he's not in that season. Yeah, I know. You always Not really. You, every movie. Spencer Milligan this, Spencer Milligan every that. Every movie. Yeah. Star Wars doesn't have Spencer Milligan. Yeah. As good as it could hey, be. remember that uh, doc, uh, Quincy, yeah. uh, what's the show episode, called? Quincy episode. Episode where they had Spencer Milligan in it. That remember that one? Best. Yeah, that one was so good. <laughs> Last Jedi would have been so much better with, with Spencer, Spencer Milligan, Milligan in it. Yeah. If he's even still alive, I know. <laughs> Possibly Spencer Milligan, rest in peace. We I think, know. I think, I think, rest in peace. But I can't remember for sure. Yeah, well. Anyway, so there, there is the first installment of our summer summer reruns, reruns, and Land of the Lost, and we don't have one hundred percent clarity on what will be the next two, but we have some good ideas. But I don't want to. Yeah, don't want to say it now and we, we be don't want to commit. Yes, <laughs> and but, then have to change it. But it will be something similar and non-similar too. Something fun and something that we remember from yeah. watching as kids. Yeah. 
So there you go. There you go. Land of the lost. Lost, lost, lost. You gotta do that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Every time. So there you go. So, Kevin. Yes. Where do they find us? Oh, oh yeah, I forgot about that part. You can find us on <laughs> it's YouTube. Late, people. It's late for me. Uh, you can find us at YouTube at Valley Lodge Productions. Mm-hmm. If Which you would is like, where you're listening to this right. That's now. where you're listening. So you already found us. If you'd like to talk to us, the best way to do is to call Jay on his personal cell phone number, which is... No, Eight, no, just kidding. Six, seven, five, five, three, three, oh, nine. nine. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was Jenny's. Well, okay. in the divorce, I got it. Oh, okay, okay. But yeah, um, the best place to, to talk to us, if you would like to, is through our Gmail account, which happens to be, <gasps> coincidentally, Valley Lodge Productions at gmail.com. Pretty easy to remember. Yeah. So questions, comments, you like it, you hate it suggestions you know you guys should do this instead or maybe try doing that or we actually had one comment yeah already which yeah. uh maybe we'll make that a, a part if we start seeing more comments yeah but that'd be neat. um you know and we'll actually remember to get the person's name but somebody commented on our yeah uh six million dollar man bigfoot episode yeah yeah and about the name of the the uh, uh the fault the fault line yeah and uh, we appreciated it yes thank you and it was nice to actually have some interaction with yep. somebody. So, um, so whoever you are, thank you. Yep. <laughs> and if you're not listening, then you didn't hear me you him just say that. You didn't hear it. So, so there you go. Anyway. So there you have it. There you have it. Land of the Lost. We will talk to you next time. See ya.